Here's a 12 to 18 month old swimming class at Laurie Lawrence Swim School. We usually have six children with their parents in the class for children under the age of four. This is a rather large class uh, championed by Emma as the lead teacher with one other assistant teacher in the class. Let's watch how she does it. The parents have got to be well drilled. They got, have to understand the skills that are required in infant aquatics. Here, Emma moves the class across the pool in wave formation, practicing their kicking. Here, she stops the class and explains that she wants them to either give the child an assisted swim in, where they hold the child all the time, or free float them in. In every instance, the child is encouraged to pull themselves up out of the water onto that teaching ledge or platform. Very often, toys are used to encourage the children to pull themselves up out of the water. Wave formation once again. The mother here points to the little girl, little Lulu, and says, we're going across kicking and proceeds to practice freestyle kick, then dolphin kick, all the time trying to feel the pressure on the top of the foot. So the children are practicing wave formation across the pool all the time, and once again they submerge and have a free swim or an assisted swim. Once they get over to this side of the pool, it's a different feel, and they are encouraged to hold on to the side of the pool. There are teaching ledges that have been put along the length of the pool so the children can put their hands there, hold on, and stand up on those ledges. This is encouraging independence. My belief, independence saves lives. Children have to learn respect for the water. They have to understand the difference between deep and shallow water. How do they get this? They get this by exploring both the shallow water and the deeper water. One of the other things we do with our parents in the under four age group, up until the age of four, we keep the parents in the water, is encourage them to wear t-shirts. Once again, this is about building independence. Here, we see an assisted swim, or a little float coming in, or an unassisted float. And once again, the children are encouraged to get themselves up and out of the water. Look how the teacher controls the class. She stops them. She said, we're now on to the float. Parents throw a ball in and the children are encouraged to submerge, go in, pull themselves up, or there's a little float, there's another float. So it's either assist the child by holding them all the time, or as they get better, allow them to free float and pull up. Once again, building independence. The teacher, the teacher, has now changed the activity and has introduced back floating coming back. When the child resists back floating, and lots of young children don't like back floating, once they learn to sit up and look around. There are methods of teaching that force back float. We at Laurie Lawrence Swim School do not believe in any force at all in teaching young children to swim. We believe that the children learn through exploration, fun, repetition and lots of practice time in the water. These are the key elements in our Learn to Swim program. Here, Mum Jane holds her thumbs out and encourages Lulu to hold on and grip. This is building independence. In the middle, she drops the little girl. 
drops her, here she goes, under, then goes down and allows Lulu to pull herself up on her mother's T-shirts. That is the use of the T-shirt. It's used to help the child to build independence, to grip all the time, teaching the child. Here we go. She's created a circus where the children go on the mat, they scamper across the mat and are encouraged to dive into their mother. Let's see if this little fella dives in. He's not quite ready, so mum sits him up on the end and says, come on, in you come. And meanwhile, Lulu's taken off. She scampers over and dives in. Now, the circuit, this part, is on the back. Jane's not going to force her and hold her on the back, but she is starting vestibular stimulation, moving the child from side to side, encouraging that back float position, then positions her on the shallow ledge, and once again encourages independence. There she goes. So this activity now has changed from crocodiling along the ledge to a swim around. So all the children come from a scamper on the mat to a back float and now to a swim around. Lulu goes under, out over deep water and back and pulls herself up on shallow water. This is a very good activity for teaching children the difference between deep and shallow water. Jane now encourages Lulu to grip her fingers, building independence and doing monkey drops. Notice the way that the mother drops the child underwater, lets her go and then waits for her to come up and pull herself up on a mother's t-shirt. This is all building independence. The next mum comes in doing exactly the same exercise. Meanwhile, as part of the circuit, this little fella is doing swim rounds. In comes little Ada, who's uh, 12 months of age, and a mum shows her how to do over the deep water, back to the shallow ledge. The most important thing in infant aquatics is your parent teacher. Your parent teacher must understand the skills that the instructor wants them to do. Without an understanding of the skills, then your class will fall in a heap. So in the initial stages, it's very important that the teacher shows the skills and has the children. Then the children are allowed to explore, dive themselves, swim and pull up on their mum's t-shirt. Infant swimming must be fun. Infant swimming must be consistent, must be regular. If you do this, the child will go from strength to strength. They should be given lots of exploration. Here, mum says, come on, in you go, swim in, and holds her arms out. What pure confidence this little 14 month old has in a mother as she strikes out in deep water by herself. Mum gives her that little bit of assistance so that she can pull up and learns through exploration. Look at this again as mum guides her. She pulls up. Nice. Mission accomplished. But as far as Lulu is concerned, she takes off. She goes over and says, I'm ready for a kickboard, Mum. But we know that that's not true. We, the Girl Whites from School and Warrior Lawrence from School, teach skills according to the children's growth and development. And we make sure that there's lots of fun in the learning process. There is lots of exploration. Mum can drop the child under give them an opportunity to come up, grip, smile, and fight. What do we think about swimming lessons? We think that infraquatics is one of the best things for young babies. And this has been proven 
by the study that was done by Professor Robin Jorgensen on infant robotics. It showed that children who have lessons of it builds their social, emotional, physical and intellectual capital. They're smarter, they're better coordinated and they are safe and healthy. Is there any wonder that I I've been teaching it for clinics now for over 47 years. 47 years in the sport. And what have I learned? I've learned never force a child in the What a dumb child. I've learned make it fun. I've learned stick to the learn it from process, which is breath control, learning to hold your breath. Submersion, going on the wall, floating as this little champion is doing, and able to do skills such as turning. Watch her now as Mum drops her and she turns underwater unheeded back to her mother, grips and pulls herself up. Swing the sails. Look at the joy on Mum's face as she and Lou, as part of this. Class, this 12 to 18 month class that the Lord Amherst teacher uh, as part of the class runs through the schools. I think when you've got a class and here Emma has got the class, circled them and she's going to run through the learn to swim turning skill progressions. So the first thing we do is we tell the child to turn underwater and then we actually use a trigger, then lift, lower and spin them underwater. Tell the child what you want them to do, then allow them to do it. So Emma's just running through the skill building process where they'll go under and do it. Then she will try a half unassisted turn. So first is a full turn, next is a half unassisted turn and then it's a full unassisted turn as we saw Lulu execute just a few minutes ago. This is a great way to get your class together where the teacher stands as part of the circle and instructs exactly what she wants. So now she's explaining, I want you to just do a half turn with these children. So they go. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Down, turn around, ready, go. So you use the trigger words so the child knows exactly what is happening. As I've said before, if you want a great infant aquatic class, then your parents need to be well educated. Your parents have to understand the importance of skill building, the importance of the learn to swim process. They have to understand that all learn to swim starts with the float. The float is the basis of all learn to swim. Once you have a child floating, then by pure exploration, they will learn to move through the water whether it be by paddling or kicking or a wriggling or some motion where they will go from point A to point B. Floating is the basis of everything. But if you want your child to swim well, then you need to get the skills that they are learning perfect. That's why we teach the parents how to manipulate the kick, how to hold the knees, how to flop the feet. It's repetitive repetitive learning which builds muscle memory so we teach them to float then we build the kicking skills and we repeat that kicking skill so that we're building good muscle memory once that is achieved then the child will start to progress and move through the water it's such a great sport and learning to swim is so good however 
if you want to be, if you want to have, I should say, a great swimming lesson, then the parents are the key. You as a teacher have to understand all the skills and show the parents correctly. Once you've done this, you can establish your circuit and allow the children to go to different activities and keep the class moving. So in fact, they're there with you, the teacher, and they are learning to swim for the entire half hour lesson. Go on, become a swimming teacher.